Since the start of the counteroffensive in June, Ukrainian forces have moved slowly north and south of Bakhmut in an attempt to encircle Russian troops there in a pincer movement and eventually retake the town. Devastated Bakhmut was captured by Russian forces in May after months of fighting. Ukraine's defense ministry has frequently described the fighting there as fierce. Russia has mobilized all available resources in an effort to stop Ukrainian counteroffensives in southern and eastern Ukraine. A top Ukrainian general has reported renewed progress on the war's southern front, saying his troops are systematically displacing the enemy from their positions. The Wagner Mercenary Group, whose members have fought some of the harshest and bloodiest fighting in the Bakhmut area, did not take part in military operations in Ukraine in any significant way after the brief armed uprising. Video footage shows military counterintelligence officers from the Security Service of Ukraine destroying three Russian invader tanks, including two T-90s and a modern T-90M, using a Kamikaze FPV drone, and also four infantry fighting vehicles, three armored personnel carriers, light multi-purpose armored tractor, anti-aircraft installation, observation complex Murom, anti-tank guns, 17 vehicles, two ammunition depots, three units of engineering equipment, two unmanned aerial vehicles and FPV drone calculations from invaders. The SBU press service reported on this on its Facebook page, without specifying the period during which the enemy suffered the aforementioned losses. In contrast, it was noted that since the start of 2023, the SBU military counterintelligence operational combat group has destroyed or disabled 76 heavy weapons units including 28 tanks. ZSU artillery also destroyed a column of Russian military equipment in the Zaporozhye direction. In the video released by the Telegram channel Operative ZSU, you can see enemy military trucks and armored vehicles on the road. Then shots and explosions are shown from afar. Video taken by drone. General Oleksandr Tarnavsky, commander of Ukrainian forces in the south, said in Telegram on Saturday that enemy losses over the previous 24 hours were equivalent to at least 200. His comments came as Ukrainian military analysts suggest things may not be easy for Ukrainian forces in their bid to advance south. Ukraine is focused on capturing southeastern villages en route to the Sea of Azov and areas near the eastern city of Bakhmut which Russian troops captured in May after months of heavy fighting. Russian accounts say its troops have repelled Ukrainian attacks in the eastern region of Donetsk, including around Bakhmut. In another video shown, the Air Force and Defense Forces carry out 13 strikes on concentration points of the Russian invaders' manpower and military equipment, and one more on their anti-aircraft missile complex. Among other things, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported this in an evening summary published on the official page of the social network Facebook. In turn, the People's Representative and frontline volunteer Yuri Mysigin reported that a HIMARS-type multiple rocket launcher destroyed the invaders' Tor M2 air defense system in a firing position with a high-precision GMLRS projectile in the direction of Zaporizhia. Meanwhile, the People's Representative and Frontline Volunteer Yuri Meshigin said on his Twitter page that our defenders destroyed an enemy tank with a barbecue together with its crew in the direction of Melitopol. The Russians managed to advance around the village of Rogatin. Only the crew commander of the T-72B-3M survived. If I'm not mistaken, the video was recorded by the interventionists who had no idea what to do with the tank slowly advancing towards their position in the forest path having caught fire. Judging by the fact that the tank exploded with fire from the center of the turret, it could have been hit by the American Javelin anti-tank missile system. The head of Ukraine's presidential office, Andriy Yermak, told reporters the fighting was tough, 
but said the Western allies were not pressuring Ukraine to advance more quickly, AFP reported. At a meeting with the leadership of the Ukrainian armed forces on Friday, the president told the military that this was important, Yermak said. Ukraine will not negotiate with Russia until it withdraws its troops from Ukraine. Even thinking about these talks is only possible after the Russian troops leave our territory, he said. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces reported on July 15 that Russia had lost 237,180 troops in Ukraine since the start of the full-scale invasion in February 2022, with an estimated 590 casualties as of July 14. Ukrainian troops in the Tavria Group made gains on the southern front, destroying nine ammunition depots and destroying military equipment in Russian-occupied territory on July 14, Brigadier General Oleksandr Tarnavsky reported on Telegram. The defense forces are systematically driving the enemy out of their positions, Tarnavsky said. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he is offering Wagner mercenaries the chance to continue serving alongside Russia after their aborted uprising last month against Moscow's military leadership. Interviewed by Russian Daily Commerce and on Thursday, Putin said the offer was one of several he made at a meeting with about three dozen Wagner fighters and their founder Yevgeny Prigozhin, five days after Wagner's forces staged a brief mutiny last month. On July 5, Ukraine's Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malier said on her Telegram channel that there was ongoing heavy fighting in the Bakhmut direction, and that Kiev forces hit the enemy in the east so hard that in some areas their military units started attacking, leaving positions them as one unit. The Institute for the Study of War ISBOE, a U.S.-based think tank, said in its latest update on the war on Thursday that Ukraine resumed counteroffensive operations in at least three sectors of the front line on July 13 and made gains in several areas. <laughs>